Okay, we're here at IDF. I'm John Furrier with SiliconAngle.com and SiliconAngle.tv. We're in the Developer Lounge at uh, Intel Developer Forum 2012. This is all about software.intel.com and go there, find out what's going on with Intel. Uh, we're at a great keynote. We're here with industry analyst at Krish. Uh, at Krish is the CEO and founder of Rishishad, Rishadot Research, a uh, new research firm out there pioneering kind of the cutting edge and the future wave of, of convergence, data center, consumerization of IT, mobility, and what this all means to businesses. Krish, Welcome to the Mobile Cube. Yeah, it's, a, it's my pleasure to be here and pleasure to be talking to you again. And uh, it's a great event. Uh, uh, the keynote was really good and uh, I was pretty, uh, pretty impressed with uh, how, how the keynote went. I love Intel keynotes because one, I'm a big fan of Intel and I love Intel because they've done generations of innovation. They abstract away complexity. They got super alpha geeks. They all, usually don't get the, the, the credit sometimes in the in the hype circles, but Intel does great work. But one of the things that really stuck out for me on this uh, keynote was this notion of, of abstracting away the ease of use, uh, higher performance. Obviously they had some great demos, but mobility obviously is a big part of the story. What is your take on what's happening here at the developer forum relative to mobility? Obviously this is not just about Apple and Samsung, this is about future apps, future development. So share with your perspective as an analyst this whole mobility trend because this is what the user and computing environment will look like. Yeah. The mobility trend, uh, I, I'm coming from the enterprise uh, point of view, the mobility trend in the enterprise is just starting. So uh, uh, there will be lots and lots of innovations in the coming years and it's going to change completely, uh, the change the enterprise landscape completely from what we are seeing today. But one thing uh, that uh, struck me in the keynote is, uh, uh, Daddy made the statement that uh, mobility is not, a, uh, mobile, mobile computing is not just about mobility, but it's also about computing. I think that is very, that's the key thing here going forward. Right now, the kind of devices which we have are very low powered and there's very little innovation we can do with that. Uh, but that itself is pretty uh, amazing for uh, for, uh, uh, for old fashioned people like you and me, like who are you using? Uh, old fashioned, come on, I'm still young. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my, my thinking is we will be moving, uh, we are in the cloud, big data and all those things. As we move more into the big data world, we will our idea of cloud will move move from a more centralized one to more distributed one in terms of it's more like a p2p cloud or something like that when that kind of a change comes in the importance of computing and and mobility is going to change change the way we innovate i think that that particular point really impressed me because i think that is hinting towards where we'll be going in the years to come talk about the you mentioned computing because let's let's break that apart for a second, drill down on computing. What, is, what do you mean by that specifically? Because with the centralized uh, computing resources, cloud mm -hmm. and big data, you get a lot of stuff all over the place. Mm -hmm. Do you mean end user computing, data center computing, all of the above? Can you I be think, specific? Uh, I think as we go by, every, uh, the end user computing and data center computing is going to come merge together. And we are going to, uh, uh, it will be very tough to differentiate between these two. At, uh, at least uh, it may not happen in the coming uh, two, two to five years, but it is go eventually going to happen. Uh, uh, eventually, every computer, you ca uh, every mobile device you carry might be a node in the uh, cloud. So we, we might go to a P2P kind of cloud. So the reason why it, it is interesting for me is if we imagine uh, uh, the cloud as something centralized, like a few cloud providers like Amazon or Google taking care of the entire world's need, you have to bring in all the data to them. The network latency is not going to go away anytime too soon and uh, lock-in risks come into picture. And also, not every app is going to be written for for uh, uh, for Amazon kind of cloud. So the people would want some high performance due to various reasons. So when these kind of needs converge together, our the idea of cloud will go from handful of uh, cloud providers offering cloud up there somewhere to cloud being distributed everywhere, everywhere to every device, and uh, there'll be a overlay, over, uh, over, a layer over, over, the, over the distributed uh, network, which will abstract away the complexity. So when you say P2P cloud, obviously that brings up stuff that we've been covering at Silicon Angle and you've been covering on, on cloudavenue.com is uh, personal cloud. Mm -hmm. So there's personal clouds that people could have, but also P2P cloud could mean clouds talking to each other. Um, is it the cart before the horse? What comes first? The automation on the cloud side? Because this sounds a lot like VMworld with VMware's you know, abstract pool and, and automate. Uh, What's your take on that 
cloud migration? Uh, I think uh, it will be, uh, we will first have to fix the, figure out the automation part first. Uh, otherwise, uh, the, the entire user experience is going to break down if, uh, if we move to P2P cloud. So uh, the first step will be a more federated cloud ecosystem where there will be many players offering uh, uh, services based on niche needs of users. So uh, once you figure out how you, how you abstract away the complexity that comes out of that kind of a more federated ecosystem, you will then think, you can then think about uh, P2P cloud and how to take care of, uh, how to handle those comp additional complexities that come from the, uh, those things. But uh, the, in the past, we have had uh, P uh, P2P kind of a distributed cloud, SETI at home, and a uh, few of the, the protein computing uh, project and all those things. I think uh, that, that, that should give us a clue about uh, how things will work. Okay, well, a big theme here with developers is software. Software.intel.com is really the developer uh, zone here. Um, obviously, the keynote was a lot of demos, a lot of future. Coke Machine, that's got a lot of embedded systems. Mm -hmm. They call intelligent systems. Talk about this notion of software infrastructure, because you know software seems to be the theme here around data infrastructure. We talked about that VMware. We saw VMware and virtualization guys going all software, and that's the future of the data center. Can you share with the folks out there your perspective of the software-defined data center? Okay, uh, the thing is, like a software Software is going to uh, going to be where every all the innovation is going to ha happen uh, going forward. Like uh, yes, hardware is important. There will be different. Uh, uh, there will be some innovation underneath, but software is going to abstract away everything and uh, going to give the control to the end user. So if we have to move to that kind of uh, um, uh, world, we need to, uh, software is, uh, is going to be the layer where innovation is happening. You asked about software defined uh, data center, and uh, I think VMware made it. Uh, uh, slogan uh, during VMworld last uh, last week. I think uh, we, uh, software defined data center is the first step VMware is taking to to sort of compete in a world which I uh, which I see as more like a ocean of services where different services exposed from the infrastructure all the way to applications uh, will be exposed to the uh, within quotes ocean and uh, all these services will be around big data, uh, da data uh, in general and uh, so the when you go to that kind of a services world the data center or infrastructure as we know it today will get more and more abstracted into a more simplified service and i think uh, uh, vmware is positioning for that and dynamic the way they have brought dynamic uh, bought dy dynamic ops and sort of integrated their uh, services manager into it sort of gives me a uh, hope that they are prepa prepping for the services world and with cloud foundry on top of it uh, I think uh, they are well pushing to do that and I think every other company is going to go in that direction well, we had the founder of the dynamic ops on the on the on the cube at VMworld we confirmed and we're the first to report that it's going to sit on top of vCloud which is actually a good spot for those guys uh, my final question to you is because you're obviously on the cloud you year you've been in the, in the cloud we've been watching this from from the beginning kind of growing up and all the promise of the cloud we saw it explode and be the most disruptive thing relative to startups, but now as enterprise starts to get more cloud specific, hybrid cloud and private cloud, um, we talked about this on the Cube at VMware with Chris Hoff, and he wrote a post inspired by our conversation around this cold war of cloud, because you know, with Cloud Foundry, you got Google Compute Cloud, you have a lot of people pushing their clouds, uh, and, and there's a variety of benefits for each one of them for enterprises. So we're kind of coming back to this interoperability question. You mentioned it earlier around clouds talking to each other. What do you see around one, this cloud cold war, if you will. Not really direct war, but there's some posturing mm -hmm. around security and other things, and we drill down on the cube. Um, but just in general around this notion that we're going back to back this full circle around interoperability around clouds. Can you share your opinion on that? Uh, interoperability, uh, interoperability will be a problem for time, uh, for some more time to come. The thing is, like, uh, let's uh, be clear, the Amazons of the world and Googles of the world were first generation of cloud uh, services, which was uh, more focused towards startups. As enterprises come into, uh, into the buying game, it's going to change. Uh, there, there will be more people coming in. That's what we are seeing in terms of uh, BM, uh, VMware, and OpenStack and all those things posturing into uh, into the marketplace with their own offering, with the, their own niche and things like that. Uh, interoperability, uh, interoperability is going to be the key, but that will happen at a layer much above the infrastructure, you know, all these infrastructure platforms. So I think uh, it, it is going to take some more time uh, to figure out. Right now, uh, 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 I am sort of pushing against any standardization effort because I think uh, right now people are innovating in terms of interoperability. For example, if you're using uh, OpenStack and uh, Amazon Web Services, I can uh, go with right scale or status and take care of the portability needs. So right now, let, let, we should let people innovate. And once uh, we see more innovation in the space, 
price and once the pain point becomes uh, too much for the uh, uh, end customers i think then we should talk about standardization and uh, i think uh, eventually we will settle this issue but uh, yeah, I agree with you. I think standardization is more when it gets more mature. Let the developers innovate. Let the market develop fast. Not bog it down with some sort of standardization discussion. Um, I'm psyched. I'm psyched for developers. I'm psyched to see OpenStack become much more developer centric. A lot more raw materials out in the marketplace. Uh, we're here with Chris uh, Intel Developer Forum. This is SiliconANGLE coverage of IDF 2012. We'll be right back.